trash the hill. Oh, thank you, Clark, for doing this for us. I can't do this side thing because you know I'm a little light on the plastic surgery. So I'm I'm going to uh, put well, yeah, this so that you can get me straight oh, on because uh, right. that's the way it rolls. Yes. Share. She was in a movie called Mask, and now she wears the mask. But I love Cher. I don't care. I love her. She's on tour again. She's fabulous. Okay, tonight I will be doing five easy pieces. Okay. 21st century road trip. The magic is gone. Paint chip poem number one. Last call, send in the clowns. And it's all about the money. I love this uh, no applause thing. It really keeps things moving along. So uh, no applause necessary till the end. Do with me what you want in the end. I want all my friends, my friends, to come on a journey with me. Do you know who your friends are? Mm -hmm. All my friends. Do I have something uh, coming from an audience member? What would you like me to do, darling? So we could see your lovely little self. Are you not using the music stand? Gosh, is that uh, considered uh, a director? Have we got a director in here? Thank you, sweetheart. I know you're trying to be helpful. And I'm going to start the fuck over. I want all my friends to come on a journey with me under chem trail sky going where no one has gone before 21st century road trip into the matrix beyond brave new world are we there yet peekaboo they see you trace track track trace the license plates just rolling along singing a song you say privacy and i say privacy Privacy, privacy. Oh, let's call the whole thing off. I phone, you phone, we all phone. Yakety yak, Twitter, tweet, tweet, blog, texting. Yahoo, here's my email. Let's get together sometime. NSA, cybersecurity, spies with little techno eyes. Doobie, doobie, digital do. Unchecked, out of balance, watch your P's and Q's. In land of the free, home of the brave, wrong place, wrong time, here, there, everywhere, you may be committing a nameless crime. They're watching you. Wow, put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Smile and wave, look at you, look at me. Oh, wonderful me, look. Living the dream within the dream on Facebook. Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Metadata. Where'd you get those Google, Google, googly eyes? Trace, track, track, trace, relax. Big Brother's got our backs. Stop, search, safe and sound. Cat, lost, always found. First century road trip. Say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, it's the bomb. Dynamite. Listen, can you hear? Murmuring atoms wait in the wings, beckoning. Here, to mysterious darkness. Concentrate. There it is. Old stage magician, all frayed around the edges. Now you see him, soon you won't. Lost in haunted shadows, becoming a stir. Nary a trick up his ragged sleeve. Disheveled, moth eaten, he stumbles around in black threadbare cape. Red satin lining, faded, falling apart, 
at the seams. Style, pointy Italian shoes down at the heels, been years since they had a shine. In a forgotten pocket, soiled deck of cards, missing jacks and queens. Time has not been kind. The show is over. Someone tell him long ago the rabbit hippity hopped out of the tattered top hat. Bye bye, bunny. Gone. Never to be conjured up again. The lovely white doves flew the coop. Gone. The elegant debonair flare, unable to take a proper bow. Body stiff and stooped, gone the flawless trickery. Once you saw it, now you don't. Sleight of hand, up in a puff of smoke, astounding illusions gone. Poof, vanished into thin air, along with most of his teeth. Impeccable posture, the meticulous pencil-thin mustache, the improbable jet black hair, all gone a stranger to himself. He is a shambling testament to the fact that nothing lasts forever. So sad. No more polished patter lingo making us believe in magic. Not a ghost of a chance to ever grace the stage again. Beautiful assistants, dematerialized, levitated, sawed in half, Misdirections, poised all sexy in glamorous artifice. High heels, sequins, pasted on beauty pageant smiles. Some were lovers, two were wives, gone, oh, gone to God knows where. Gone, the old razzle-dazzle, the fun of being fooled. Suspended disbelief, astonished gasps, never to be heard again. How'd he do that? No, borrowed time is not kind. The master of deception, gone. Hands no longer quicker than the eye. Too unsteady to wave a magic wand. An embarrassment, senile old sorcerer. Discon, disoriented, confused mind. Forgetting to say, abracadabra. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, boys and girls. Dry your tears. No more magical mystery tour. Disappeared into smoke and mirrors. Hocus pocus. Worn out wizard, give up the ghost. Final disappearing act. Undeniable proof that nothing endures. Gone, no mosthini, no more. Ta da's, oohs, or ahs. Gone, adios, ciao, bon nuit. Show's over, move along, folks. Nothing more to see. The magic is gone. A footnote. Don't bother to clap. Tinkle Bell is dead. Okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Is she um, yeah, she is. That's nice, you know. You, 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 you know, you come to these genteel readings, and some people clap. They don't clap. You say, don't bother to clap. Uh, it's it's a it's a. Interesting thing for me to not to be in, in an open mic situation because uh, I am in the trenches. That's that's where I am. Okay, page trip poem number one, which was published in a great uh, collection of poetry, and um, I see Miss Sarah Page and Mr. Stephen Gray here, and every. I see it, it gets better and better. Anyway, they published this for me. It's a paint chip number one. All right, now paint chips are those little pieces of paper, cardboardy things that you see in a hardware store. They got names on them. They're paint chips. I use paint chips as a springboard to tell a story. So here we go. Paint chip number one. Little Linda. In her tattered, once fine, hot pink party dress, was a punk rock bombshell smarty pants. She stayed in a rundown stucco apartment complex called the Casa Royale. She was paying the bills with a literary arts grant and working on a screenplay. That's what one does when living in sunny LA. Little Linda had a black cat named Whimsical Whiskers, an iguana, Pinky, a white rabbit, 
a sweet singing parakeet and a tadpole in a jar. She called them her babies. One morning, while drinking sassafras tea and smoking a big, fat blueberry bud, she said aloud, Damn! I love being me. And uh, moving right along here. Let's keep it moving. I don't need that big applause, but thanks anyway. Last call, y'all. That's right. This was published in a thing called Sparring with Beefy Ghosts. I want to thank all these folks that worked so hard to get, you know, unknown people such as myself. They take a chance on us. They like what we do. They put us in something. They put us in print. And I really, I can't thank you all enough for doing that for all of us. Last call. Send in those goddamned clowns. We could use a few laughs. Bring them on. Old school Barnum and Bailey bombastic buffoons. Circus Vargas OGs. Grease painted grotesques. Clowns. Swaggering, stumbling, lumbering clowns. Zany, fake, frolic, huge shoes, flapping, horns, honking, arms flailing, senselessly running around in circles. Clowns. A dozen of them tumbling out of a tiny car. Chaos, bedlam. Leering, leering, malicious looking dwarf in baby bonnet, brandishing, exploding cigar. Slap, happy, clown, mama, propels, carriage, careening about all things, and dots. Enormous balloon memory sway from side to side, bustle but follows insanely bouncing up and down. Oh, the monstrosity. Fortissimo. The band plays on and on and on. Unending crescendo assaults the ears. Circus music in overdrive. Whoopee! Mayhem. Clowns to the left of me. Clowns to the right of me. Oh, just look at them. Mismatched, ragtag, ill-fitting clothes. Garish, candy-colored, creepy, fright wigs. Oh, no, watch your back. Melancholy, sad sacks looking like homeless hobos up to no good. Thwack, whack with a rubber bat. Flea bozos on the attack. Galumphing, wild and woolly, demonic, filthy, red-nosed bastards. Splat with the spritzer. No, 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 no. I got you right, McKisser. Here it comes, the big finale. A swift kick in the ass. Clowns. Rough house rumpus. Knock them, suck them down, and they get right back up again for another round. A deceptive raunt, romp. There's no gaiety to any of it. Oh, what the hell. Crank up circus crazy. Send in the big guns. Be movie psychotic killer clowns. Zombie clowns. Political clowns. Corporate clowns. This ain't no kid party. I know the score. Let's have some fun. Bring them on. I'm done because you see, clowns don't scare me anymore. And uh, one final piece here. <laughs> Thank you. A, a piece that, uh, gosh, appeared in another beautiful work effort to uh, get people published. On, on this outdoor, I know Martin knows about it, it's been very lively, the uh, 16th and uh, Mission. Um, it's on the street and it's wild and it's beautiful, everybody just shows up. This was in in that uh, collection that they put out, and uh, gosh, it was uh, quite a few years ago that I did this. Has the economy collapsed yet? Another day, another dollar. God damn, it's all about the money. Old money, smart money, new money, easy money, hard-earned money. Fuck you, money. Drug money, funny money, other people's money, corporate money, laundered money, blood money. Money to burn, making a killing, follow the money. Laughing and crying all the way to the bank, filing for Chapter 11. A penny is a penny earned, 
spare change spare change spare change spending money like a drunken sailor when it rains you know it rains bad news from heaven put your money where your mouth is you can't take it with you money can't buy love money can't buy happiness loots the root you better believe it shit it's all a crapshoot Queer as a three dollar bill, you have been written out of the will. Money is no object. The moon belongs to everyone. Yeah, the best things in, in life are free. What a bitch. It's a lottery dream, a do re me, a Ponzi scheme. All about the green, baby. A mark, a buck, a yen, or a pound is all that makes the world go round. Makes the world go round. Money doesn't grow on trees. Big bucks living large, paid through the nose on ABC Street. Throwing good money after bad, oh, it's nothing but jump change. You get what you pay for, the money shot. You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is upside down. Show me the money. Saving for a rainy day, living beyond your means. Fixed income, making ends meet, breaking even, coming up short. Turning a profit in the black, in the red. Time is money. Loads of insurance and you're worth more dead. Poor as a church mouse, heading for the poorhouse. Cold, hard cash on the barrel head. Easy come, easy go. Yeah, he's loaded. Rolling in dough. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You want to go out and have some fun, you got to spend some cash. And let the good times roll. Bad credit, no credit, double your money, robbing Peter to pay Paul, winner takes all. In God we trust the Midas touch. Spend, thrift, penny, pinch, or tight watch, cheapskate, money, rubber, fat cat, trust, fun, baby, filthy, rich bitch, love for sale, appetizing, young love for sale. It's tax deductible, a fool and his money are soon part. God will provide. Money crisis. Brother, can you spare a dime? I'm down on my luck. Busted. Financially embarrassed. Broke as fuck. It takes money to make money. You look like a million bucks. Make quick money at home, at your kitchen table, in your underwear. Buy now. Pay later. Shake your money maker. Only 99.99. Cha-ching. Nickel and dime. Hey, big spender. Spend a little time with me. Cha-ching. Debt ceiling. Has the economy collapsed yet? Money makes the world go round. That clinking, clinking sound it makes the world go round. Greed breeds the need for more money, more money, more money. Cha-ching, bling, bling. Cash is king. Money talks, bullshit walks. No money, no honey. A penny for your thoughts. Pay the rent. Pay the bills. There's gold them in our hills. Hit and pay dirt. Losing your shirt. The high cost of living. Right on the money. Life is cheap. The almighty buck stops nowhere. <laughs> Nothing but dead presidents, more death and taxes. Yeah, baby, it's only money. And uh, that, that first draft of that piece was, yeah, here it is, published on the 16th of Mission, September 2007. I am Cara Vida, a.k.a. Cara Vida, a.k.a. Cara Cash. Yes, I'm my pleasure to be here tonight, and thank you so much. Well, my father always said, money is not everything. A certified check will do just as well. <laughs> distance travel to be with us tonight. We started with right across the street, you know, I don't know how far, all just, just from the prison, you know, so library, the prison, across the Golden Gate Bridge from uh, Hayes Valley, right? Where you live in Hayes Valley? Yes, yes, Pretentious Hayes Valley. And now we have all the way from Alberta, Calgary, Canada, she gets the uh, 
Air Miles. <laughs> Frequent flyer, Sherry D. Wilson has eight collections of poems, some of which are available for sale. Godless Gun Fishing for a Map of the Universe, her collections resume from Front Neck Press, won the 2006 Stephen G. Stephenson Award for Poetry and was shortlisted for a Candlelight Award. She's two spoken word CDs, four award-winning video poems, Spinsters, Hanging in Trees, both produced by Bravo Back. 2011, she added the spoken, work, well, spoken word workbook, Inspiration from Poets Who Teach, an educational tool for teaching and writing spoken word. Her website's concerned the book presents possible direction for electronic publishing in the future. CBC has called her one of the top 10 poets in Canada. A big place. I'm, a, I'm one of the bottom 12 poets of Novato. In 2003, she won the USA heavyweight title for poetry. In 2006, the National Slam of Canada presented her with the Poet of Honor Award. And in 1989, she studied at Naropa University's Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics. 2012 presented in the opening event of the National Slam of Canada. And she's also the owner, operator, creator of the What's the name of your festival? Oh, Calgary Spoken Word Festival. The Calgary Spoken Word Festival, which is? Not owned, it's non-profit. Well, <laughs> but it is the largest spoken word event in North America. I give you Sherry D. Wilson. comes to the festival from New York says that um, if it was in an American city it would be better attended uh, so uh, but usually like last year we had a hundred artists come in from all over the world and we work in uh, three or four languages generally at least one Aboriginal language because I, I really like um, to address the fact that most languages are going extinct or a lot of them are and, and, and this way we can um, share poetry, which I feel, um, you know, is the best way to share. I'm just going to riff on, I usually do in Canada to block the fact that people have heard my poems before, but you never know. <laughs> so I'll just do poems. <clears throat> this is called, or are you going by the, how is the side, can you check the angle on the video? It, uh, yes. Is it, it it, what, um, what I'm telling you, like, like something video. happens, yeah, like more. after the age of eighty. Like something about the chin. No, no, seriously. You're, 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 you're better. I've just been drawing shells on myself. It's not that. I'm more worried about the mic in the way. Well, I mean, you look, you look great. I mean, uh, I, 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 well, I mean, it depends. Like, are, are you like a narcissist like I am? I mean, you look good over here. It looks good. I think it looks good. It looks good. It looks great. River mortis in a second degree. Delete. Calling me through the midsummer fusion heat from the cup from the crumbling shambles of a gang house porch, through the silent shadows of the street lamp torch, the incorporeal corpse was calling me, hanging upside down, calling me to cut her down, to set her free, to give her death some dignity. So I cast a spell on the gatekeeper key, use trickster power of crow to aid me, to tame the frothing guard dog fangs, chained pit 
bull to the criminal gang. In my arms, a ghostly child, unjustly defiled. In a veil of black feathers, hollow we wet, searching for light that night, I met a crow who called through cursed blight. And who? I taxied Rhea Graven en route to her funeral flight. I hung crow woman aloft my altar, ebony nib pointing down, and I prayed. And the crow started to grow inside my ever wavering room, and the shadow flexed, and the marring flayed. Crow ghost spreading breath black wings, death black wings, and beginning to moan of the murder of crow, murder of crow. Tearing wet, bleak blue feathers, touched by the fingertips of Buddha together, our mourning moved down the broken body to the crown of the clown kind cry. Down the broken body to the tip of the bleak dark eye, where the sound screamed and screamed and screamed and then died down. Broken tears fell drop by drop, scorching wet sorrow, momento mori moro, onto the altar's clouds ground. It rained and it rained and it rained. At daybreak, I took crow woman to the sacred groves where I gave her back to the earth. Buried in crow graveyard closest to birth. And all the crows came dressed in black, ghosts of crows and crows living. And they flew around my head like a Hitchcock halo of screaming thorns, clacking and crowing and screaming their thank-filled song, they carried me, they carried me, they carried me along on a beautiful kind of crow carrion blue. Indigo! Relationships are good for at least two poems. <laughs> One at the beginning and... <laughs> so, this is one of those love poems. It's kind of in between. It's almost out the door thing. Um, <laughs> it's... I don't know why it's called that. I didn't even realize it was. It's called Roses. Roses one. The reason why we can't be together is we're both roses. <laughs> and in a relationship, there has to be a gardener. <laughs> roses two. We 
won't need a gardener if we both grow wild. <laughs> Roses one. Who will water? Roses two. The rain. <laughs> I have so much time on my hands. <laughs> I don't watch TV, I don't have children, and all I do is work. It's all very sad. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> it's really not that bad. It's not as bad as I'm thinking. <laughs> um, so, uh, last year, a Vancouver magazine phoned me up, and they said, well, the magazine didn't phone me up. A person from the magazine actually phoned me up. Um, and, um, the, and she said, hi. And I said, hi. And she was like, um, in 1991, you were on the cover of our magazine. And I was like, yes. She goes, one of our young interns, we're going through the old <laughs> archives. I was like, yes. And, uh, well, she really liked it. She she liked the picture, and we'd like to remix it and use it on our cover next month. Well, what do you think? And I was thinking, oh, that's fantastic. I'm going to look like I had aged a day in millions of years, <laughs> however long that is. And she, she, I said, sure, go ahead. That's fantastic. She goes, no money. I was like, oh, okay, I'm used to that. And she goes, oh, one more thing. We're going to call the issue micro celebrities. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. That's exactly the sound I was thinking. She goes, do you mind? I was like, Microscopic life. Oh, <laughs> to the micro, micro dot and the quantum shot of drink me, drink me, drink me, Alice in Wonderland's altar rot. To coming in under the radar, many millions between centi and zepto million nano, because there was no race in the first place. Just open space by which to muse, to dance up close, no socks, no shoes, with a beautiful delusion of bone. Like a rhizome poem, or zoom in tight on a biome org, the complete unknown. So synonymous with anonymous, my life's almost hieroglyphic. Microficialistic, zip, zilch, zero, that's me. A beautiful mythic snippet of micro freedom. I say, maybe I'm an apirophobe with a mortal fear of infinity not divinity, my life's in the vicinity of obscurity, um, a molecular semi-celebrity. If I were a marble, I'd want to be a peewee. Surveillance cameras are the only paparazzi for me. Oh, to the quasi and the demitas and the infinite infinitesimal and the ass with sass and a micro mini and the stingless drone who lives to love in the microphone of cosmic cosms above so below and oh, in tarot, zero is birth of our hero wins first breath towards death. The new million's a trillion, and I'm coming in nothing for nothing. I'm a trilobite, a compact disc with nothing to risk except the calamity of my own omnivision vanity. Ram 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 ram
communist and the minimalist and the tiny titanic and the minuscule gigantic to the micro macrobiotic and the macro micro iconic naked to the unnaked unto the unnaked eye, we're all size etherized. When the only way to be seen is through the lens on the slide, then I'll get me a midway ticket and I'll take that techno ride straight into humanity. Because that's what I choose over social insanity. Compression, oppression, deny, deny, deny. As Gertrude Stein so aptly put it on her deathbed when she said, now, what was your question? Now, what was your question? What was your question? I'd like to do two more. This one is a continuation of that one because I couldn't stop. And this other magazine phoned me and they said, we would like to have you do a portrait. And I was like, a self-portrait? How cool, I'm Frida Kahlo. I don't have the eyebrows, but I can paint them on, no problem, I'm in. There was like, okay. So I got to work and I cut out a, a snail. And I thought, oh, cool, I'm a snail. And I put my body coming out of the snail uh, in a very flamboyant, uh, like I'm coming out of a champagne bottle type gesture. Very cool. And I, I collaged it and I put it on stones. And I thought it was the best thing. Sent it to them. Mm. And they were like, uh, hello, um, what was that? And they were like, sending us. And I was like, oh, it's my collage. It's my very first collage. And they were like, it shows. We hate it. <laughs> well, we're brutal in Canada. And, 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 and we hate it. And we won't print it because it will embarrass everyone in the world. <laughs> and so I was like, oh. Well, you asked me to do that. Like, why did you ask me? Like, you know I'm not a visual artist. They were like, well, we thought you'd write something. And I was like, oh, yes. Now, since then, I've seen lots of self-portraits by lots of people in writing. But before that, I hadn't. <coughs> After I discovered it, everybody seems to have done it way before me. Um, but um, so I wrote this self-portrait. And I think it's an interesting exercise, and in fact, it's been very interesting to observe how this has changed since then. And so I'm going to continue along these lines and write these self-portraits from, you know, every year or so and see how they change. This one goes. This one I wrote uh, two years ago, I guess. No, an, an, a year and a half. I see a Celtic water monkey dogfish goddess gone fishing woman with bonobo tendencies. Isadora Duncan was not born on my birthday, but many famous people I've never heard of were. I see an undying cartomantic, djembe drums in a core romantic. I see the fool, the high priestess, and the wild card. And I see the wanderlust of an astonished bard who never looked back or looks back to regret the things I did not do. I see a bohemian chandelier and Miss Scarlet in the game of Clue. Speaking of which, I see a vixen bitch, which I embrace with radical juju. When I was six, the misdiagnosis of leukemia and you're going to die left me with a lifelong question. What is really true? Life is only as myopic as you make it, and yes, I will fake it. Allow me to defrag my dreams. I see a trophy spinster, a hexagon of bees, and a warrior woman with umpteenth degrees, most in searing panties, none from universities. No noose is good news. I see a mama of data with all four oars in the water and eras of rare books and fishing hooks, jazz beats and multiple defeats. I see eons of eros and a roughhouse tomboy who flirted with countless addictions, heartless predilections, and I almost died, and I almost died, and I, and I, and I, almost, and I almost died again, and, and again, and again, and again. So, read me my micro-media rights. Oh, Geist magazine called me the Canadian writer who would make the best lover. 
I've never really gotten over that or under it for that matter. <laughs> if this were a personal ad, it would read, only Buddhist billionaires need apply. <laughs> But that would be a lie, because I'm looking for a microbiologist with a constant water supply who's looking for a small, small world in a minuscule pool that holds the big, big sky in reflection. I've tried to give voice to the soundless. And one of the deepest cries of questioning why was heard when I read about a young girl who died, bullied to death, and in her autopsy, they found prints of her bully's shoe treads embedded on her brain inside of her head. And that's what they said. And that's what they said. Oh, to the incandescent cantation, dot on the map, no destination, all navigation. I see a woman much older than I look. Handy perspective, then again, maybe I just need stronger glasses <laughs> of wine. Oh, to the optical illusion and the compass rose in the skeleton key, which remind me of what the Cuban shaman said to me. He said, your shango. I said, I am Yamaya. He said, your shango. I said, I am Yamaya. Shango. Yamaya! Shango! Yamaya! Shango! Only Shango would argue they are Yamaya! You are a fierce woman! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am. And tonight we flamenco. Sandals snap and gelato lick. The air so thirsty it quenches the heat of our first night caught in bonfire light. Dancing with palmist dust rising between our gypsies our gypsy bodies like a serpent's horny stone, charming us with fervor hiss to enter the zone of hypnotic bliss where everything turns trance in tone and skirts swirl this into a lightning electric tantric poem. Gertrude, my answer to your question is a question. Why is it the rarest antiquarian books, the most valued tomes, are the ones that have never been opened. Goddess gone fishing for a map of the universe. Goddess gone fishing for a map of the universe. Goddess gone fishing for a map of the multi of the multi of the multi of the multi multi of the 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 multi. enough to go to Paris. I, I love the Surrealists and um, I love them. And um, I was thinking of writing the erotic tales of this hundred-year-old woman and uh, because you can get away with anything when you're hundred. You can basically say anything you want. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so I thought, how handy. And, uh, and so I, you know, as the unidentified woman, because in the surrealist movement, most of the women were the ones that were unidentified. You some pictures, you know, it's like la la la, guy, 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 and then la la la, unidentified. And she'd be very mysterious looking with one hat, you know, like, and I'd just go, wow, who's she? And so I decided to write a play about her, the unidentified woman. And, um, and you know, about my love affairs with all the surrealists, everyone. Um, because as her, I slept with everyone. Um, every surrealist that gay, not gay, anyone, um, and I have stories about all of them, as it turns out. Um, even dead, they're not safe. I'm okay. um, and, um, and so I went there, and one of my favorite surrealists is Apollinaire. Uh, his poetry first, uh, secondly, his erotic writing. He's one of my favorite. Um, by far. He also created the word surrealism, I, which I was like, how did he do that? He was in his room, what was he doing? Maybe he was like drinking a little absinthe. I don't know what he was doing. And he came running down the stairs, running surrealism, no, 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 you can imagine it. I, oh. I was there as the unidentified woman, as it turns out, <laughs> in 1930 or whatever it was, um, 28. And so, um, 
I went there. Um, I won't tell you the whole story. I ended up living at the Clitoris of Paris. It was all ridiculously great, and it happened just organically without any trying, which I love. And and so I decided I'm going to dress as her, and I'm going to go to his grave at Père Lachaise, mm. and I'm just going to go there, and I'm going to visit him mm. as my lover. And um, I went there, and I was dressed as her, and I went there, and I. You know, threw almonds on the grave because all surrealists love almonds, and um, they do. It's the shape again. The best group of Pisces. It's fantastic. And and then uh, flowers, roses, and um, well, they weren't really roses. I wanted them to be roses. I couldn't find any, but I pretended they were roses. <laughs> they were flowers. And um, then I wrote a little note, and I uh, to him things I wanted to say, and I kissed it, and I. I bent down to put it onto his grave. And right then, this wind blows up, and it literally goes like, mm -hmm. uh, like and then it went, whew, and it went straight in the space between the headstone and plot. It just went straight in. It was kind of magnificent and freakish. And I was taken back. And I, it was like he reached up from his grave and he just pulled and there was no one there to see it, but love me, love me, love me. And and then I did have the thought that <coughs> this guy who is dead is more romantic than most of the guys that I know who are alive. <laughs> and he, he was, it was a very romantic gesture even in death. And, and then I did think, I mean, sidebar, uh, I don't usually mention it, but there's a lot of writers here. I, I did think of uh, Ginsburg's poem um, uh, that he wrote there about the ghost and uh, in, in the tree beside the grave. And then I did think of the poem that uh, Apollinaire wrote about uh, himself and, and the ghosts of Paris dancing around Paris. And he goes on this great, great poem of, oh, just check it out. It's just, and I did think that because there he was making this mention of love. Um, and so I thought, you know, he's dead, and I would like to repay him. So I just stood over his grave, and where his head would be, and I just opened my legs, and, and like, I showed him my panties. <laughs> I said, look up, oh, I should say, marche, moi, marche, uh, marche, like, eat. That's what French is for eat. You're French. Does anyone speak French here? <laughs> no, no. I didn't think you would. You're mostly Spanish type. Um, in Canada, we all mostly speak French, so uh, uh, like easy, eat, eat. Everyone knows eating, right? Eat, mange. Anyway, look up from your deathbed, darling. Let your eyes part me rain. Be my necro pantiac. <laughs> Viva la tachator, maniac! Are you stiff yet? No plant panties, votre bouche. Don't say it. Marge moi, cha cha cha. Marge toi, cha cha cha. Marge moi, cha 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 cha. The panty portal. <laughs> I met the right wrong guy, as I often meet the right wrong guy, that jock guy. <laughs> Everything was going pretty smooth in a right wrong way, apart from the 30 second premature ecstasis posing as a hot moment I had to boil down to overwork stress or high tension. Everything was going well, it was going well, it was going well. <laughs> I was willing to pardon one bad twist. <laughs> but I was not willing to boil down, overlook, or make excuses for what happened next. I called the right guy and I said, the right wrong guy, and I said, honey, guess what I did today? He said, I'm like, what? And I said, well, today I bought some new panties. And he said, oh, you do know I have to be uh, on the street by 5 a.m. to be at work, but. <laughs> did you know what I just said? Today I bought some new panties. I have to show you my new map of the. Metro, panties, metro, panties, metro. Look, if you don't want to talk about my panties, I don't want to talk to you. And I hung up. 
He called me the next day. He had 24 hours to think about what he might say. And do you know what Monsieur Imagination came up with? Oh, it's me. I just called to see how your panties were today. <laughs> after 24 hours, that's what he said. He could have asked a friend, looked it up in a book. After 24 hours, that's what he said. Click the receiver. Let him off. Don't get him off, panty pathetic, dry bod boyfriend. I called my mother for her advice. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, you know, I've been with your father for a very long time now. <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing, if I mention panties to your father to this day, your father would have something to say. <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. You don't want to be with anyone who's anti-panty. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's anti-panty. It's panty madness. Take back your panty power. <coughs> I said, Mom. Oh, that's the best panty line I've ever heard. <laughs> she said, well, the women in this family have always had a lot of libido. Uh. Do you mean libido? <laughs> libido, it's libido, and double means a panty pooper. <laughs> he could have said anything. He could have said what the dead man says through the earth. What color are they? <laughs> he could have said what the dead man says through the earth. I'm coming up there right now to rip your pretty new panties off with my teeth. And your pretty new panties will leave fresh lace imprints all over my tongue. Brish, unmentionable, unsung knicker tracks, bloomer, blueprint, staunch, gaunch snacks. Inscriptions of French cut euphoria all over your panties. Superimposed clitoria all over my tongue. Said, if you asked me to do your laundry, I would wash your panties out by hand. No, I would wash them out in my mouth, in my bouche, swoosh, 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 and then I'd sing you a song, and I'd be panting there with your panty breath. No going commando artiste, I'd rather be your priest, you my nun, by you pontiff panties all the way through Rome. Underwear, none done, lacy, racy, under habit, over panting, under panting, panting in the Pleiades of your panties, pandemonium, out it, graveside. Some dead love the panty more than the living. Graveside, I love my country. Graveside, nature, all nature. Gone the way of the dodo -do bird. Red list of extinction. Cuckoo. 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 <laughs> 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 together 27 artists from the U.S. of A is Reggie Kabiko, John Giarno, um, Bob Holman, uh, Sarah Murphy, um, Quincy Troop, and Anne Waldman. And they are giving prompts in the sense of straight to you instead of like what is spoken word. It's straight to you in history and in writing and also in performance. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the website, there's these little pop-ups, I video them giving these things and they pop up and they talk to you straight on. And it's it's quite, a, it's fun. The, the website's still in development because it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. It's still working, but it will look better over the years as it progresses. Mm -hmm. The book itself is, uh, I think, quite good. Uh, it's quite a tome. I don't want to carry them home, they're only 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. So if you feel so inclined, uh, it's over there on the table. And a big hand for you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll do it next month and the month after, and maybe the month after that. And I don't know what else to say, so thanks a lot. I appreciate your attendance.
Thank you. Stick around, okay? Let me take anything for you. What, what? You got your. Yeah, I got it all yeah, covered. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I could do this in demonstration. I can handle it here. All right, folks. I'm gonna let you go for a little bit. I'm gonna step out. Oh, I know what I can say. Buy a book. And, uh, Put five dollars in the box. Tomorrow. The box five. is right there. Finish up our live stream for you. Finish out, folks. Tomorrow we'll be uh, live streaming from Occupy Oakland at the uh, Oakland uh, 12th Street Bar. You can take to get there. Uh, I believe it starts at noon. We'll be out there until about. Uh, I'll be there personally until about five o'clock. Uh, live streaming, so you can join us over in Oakland tomorrow for Occupy Oakland's second anniversary. Um, Let's see what else is coming up. We're going to be doing March Against Monsanto. Uh, we're going to be crossing the Golden Gate Bridge on Saturday. Uh, that meets in the parking lot. Uh, check out the Facebook page, March Against Monsanto SF, or uh, San Francisco, and you'll be able to find more information out about that protest. Uh, this is to keep uh, genetically modified or mutated organisms out of our food. So uh, we'll be out there protesting that. And... Uh, uh, there's more to come up next week. Uh, Monday we'll be at in front of my building where I live at the Seneca Hotel at 34 6th Street. So that'll start at 5 p.m. Uh, broadcasting. Uh, get and know and meet the residents of my building. So uh, it's a pretty serious situation for me. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a beautiful gallery. We're here in Sausalito. And uh, I've been here a few times. And uh, here at the request of uh, Caravita. Lovely poetry tonight. So uh, I'm gonna let you guys go, take a little break, and uh, I may or may not be back up tonight, uh, but I will definitely be up tomorrow for Occupy Oakland. So I'll see everybody.